using the TI Inspire CAS handheld. Video 2 Sketching Graphs with CAS Part 4 Adjusting the Window So being able to adjust the window um, that is the viewing area that you're seeing when you draw a graph uh, is really important in being able to graph successfully using your CAS. So for example here's a cubic function that we looked at earlier um, and we note that when we graph this cubic function um, we can't see its y-intercept in the window that we currently have. Um, it's fairly easy from simple calculation to work out that its y-intercept is occurring at negative 26 and so we just need to make a small adjustment to this window in order to be able to see um, that. There are different ways that you can adjust the window, but if you only need to make one or two adjustments, um, the quickest way to do it is on the screen here. And really it's this um, lower minimum Y value that's the problem. So we can change this simply by clicking on this and changing it to say negative 30 so that it will encompass um, that y intercept at negative 26. And so now we can actually see what's going on. When you do this you'll find you often need to sort of move your labels around a bit. You might also find that if you make the minimum y value um, very low, in this case sort of negative 30 or you know much much lower than that, you might also want to make the maximum y value a bit bigger just to get your scale looking a bit um, better. Um, so you can play around though here fairly easily and see what's going on. We might also note we've got way too much happening out here um, and you know a bit too much over here and so you can play around with rescaling it. You can also at, in by the same method adjust the um, scale that's used on each axis so um, we can see that each of these ticks on the x-axis is currently worth 0.5 we can change that so that they're worth 1 you know we can change these so that they're only worth 5 and you can adjust and play around like that I find this to be sort of the easiest way to work with um, changing the window it sort of gives me a lot of control that I can see and keep adjusting um, all at once what you want to be a little bit careful of is if, for example, you needed to make this, you know, negative 10,000, in doing that, you're going to find that you've made it so small that you can't see what's going on up here. So, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of, of, of playing around in that regard. Um, let's just have a look at a different function. Um, so once I've played around with a window, um, if I want to sort of start from scratch again, I'll always hit delete three times to clear any graphs, points, whatever's going on. And then I'll also always go to menu, four for window zoom, and five for zoom standard. And that will take me back to this um, basic, um, fairly square scaling um, that that is where you usually start. So I usually always start from here. Let's think, for example, if I were to plot the graph, um, let's go with 100 times x squared plus 1. And if we draw that graph, now I find quite commonly students will draw graphs like this and go, my calculator is broken, what's happening here? Very rarely is it that your calculator is broken. Your calculator does what you ask it to do and we have asked it to draw this function. Now sketching graphs with your CAS is not a foolproof um, process. You also need to engage your brain in that process as well and think about well what am I expecting of this graph? And the key thing here for me is that big 100 sitting out there. This is essentially 100 x squared so dilated by 100 from the x-axis so it's going to be quite tall and thin and plus 100 so shifted up by 100. So that means that we know that the y-intercept is at 100 and that is the minimum point of this parabola. So it's no wonder we can't see anything when we draw this graph looking at the window that we have here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do perhaps is make this larger. If I make this 200 say so that I can see the graph then this is going to be a really small value so I probably want to adjust both of these. Another way that you can adjust the window apart from altering the numbers right here is to go to menu, 4 for window slash zoom and 1 for window settings and here you can change all those settings in the one place as well. So the minimum and maximum x values which we're not too concerned about at the moment and the minimum and ma maximum y values. Now I'm going to want the maximum y value to be about say 200 so I'm going to make this sort of 
um, sorry, negative 20, just so that my um, x-axis is still, you know, within a, able to be seen fairly easily on the screen. So now I can see my graph. So also that dilation of 100 means that it's quite tall and thin. So I also might bring in these two numbers at the side. Again, I can either do that by menu one, sorry, menu four one, um, and make this say negative five and five. Um, or, you know, you can adjust it simply by typing these numbers here. You know, again, I'd rather just scale this at one, um, etc. And you can play around with it until you get a view that you um, like. Again, let's delete this. So, delete, delete, delete. Yes. Menu for five. We're back to where we started. Let's just have a look at one more function. So, again, tab to open my entry line. I'm going to draw a cubic. So, 2x times x minus 5 times x plus 5. Now one thing you'll note here, and if you've watched some of the earlier videos, you'll have seen a discussion around implied multiplication. We will need to tell it that we mean multiplication here. Okay, so we draw this graph. Now this sort of looks like three vertical lines, and again, this is where it's so important that you actually sort of engage your brain in this process. I'm drawing a cubic function here. I know that it's got um, x-intercepts at 0 and plus and minus 5. It's cubic, so it's not three straight lines. This is in fact a cubic graph that's just quite tall, so I'm having trouble actually seeing it. So again, I need to be adjusting these maximum and minimum values here. So I don't know, let's try 200. Plenty. And now we can see the cubic. So never assume that something is straight or vertical or um, you know that that it's that it's um, a blank screen or you've, your CAS is broken or you've done something wrong. Think about what kind of function you're drawing. Think about what you expect it to look like, and adjust your window accordingly. Um, I very rarely uh, recommend using zoom. I think you're much better to control what's going on with your window. If you use, um, let me just go back to where we were. Okay, so if we used zoom here, um, zoom, zoom out, it's not too bad as long as you always zoom from the centre. One of the difficulties with it though, is that it zooms in a sort of equal ratio, which is very rarely what you want. So we've zoomed out and now we're finally at a point where we can see the vertical um, features of the graph, as in the maximum minimum turning points, but we've zoomed out by such a, a scale that we, we, we're, we've got far too much space along the x-axis. So it's very rarely um, a good way to go about it. Also one of the difficulties with zooming is that if you don't zoom right in the center, if I, for example, let's go to zooming in, so menu for zoom in, if you zoom in, say, you know, over here, you'll very quickly find you lose your axes completely. And now I don't even know where, what the hell's going on. Where is my graph? I, I'm, I'm lost. So I think zooming is a really easy way to get yourself lost. And you're much, much better to control your window by either using menu for one or adjusting the numbers actually on the screen by clicking on them. So I'm going to go back to um, zoom standard. So menu for five um, and go from there again. Uh, so just, just be careful about zoom. Generally, adjusting the numbers on the screen, I think, is the best way to go about it. In the next video, we'll be looking at how to use the definition of our graph uh, in other calculations in the calculator screen. So stay tuned for that one.